Good afternoon, everybody. Price Eadley here. Uh, excited to be with you. Uh, we had a lot of great speakers today, I know. Um, I'm going to talk about a little more aggressive options trading strategy, uh, really buying relatively cheap options. So options priced at a buck or less, meaning $100 per contract controlling 100 shares, to really get mega leverage and some big potential home runs. Of, uh, so we're going to walk you through that. This is not uh, for uh, widows and orphans. This is definitely for just the aggressive part of your portfolio. But it's been working so well, and I'll, I'll share with you why I believe it's working so well uh, and, and, and walk you through all that. Before I get rolling on it, I do want to remind you, of course, that everything I share with you here today is for your information and education only. Uh, nothing I talk about here should be considered a specific recommendation of buy or sell any particular investment. Of course, you know that you are 100% responsible for your own investment decisions. Big Trends and its staff are not responsible for any trades you choose to make. And not all Big Trends products or services are appropriate for all types of traders or investors. So, you know, keep your risk level in mind and what fits your own particular objectives. Uh, Big Trends doesn't provide any personalized financial tax or legal advice to any one individual. What we do is we take our research, we email it out and, and send it to your smartphone in real time of what we're recommending to buy. And then anything we bought, we always tell you when to get out as well. So then you can decide how you want to use it. Also consult your tax advisor before you make any investment that's going to impact your unique tax situation. So, you know, uh, coming off of the World Series, it's a good time to talk a little bit about baseball, in particular about why I'm interested in not just hitting singles uh, in this strategy, but actually leveraging relatively cheap options for potential doubles of 100%, uh, triples, which would be 200%, uh, three times your money, or four baggers, the home runs and grand slams, if you will, where you clear the bases, where you can make four times your money. That's how we set these trades up in our grand slam options portfolio. So we'll talk about why those options make sense in this low volatility environment. Also, why gamma matters in options, a little bit of the more technical side of options pricing and how you can take advantage of some discrepancies, I believe, in the options pricing model. I'll share with you some of my favorite grand slam options filters, including CCI, what I call the big trends bands, and also the average directional movement or ADX indicator, as well as an overview of my aggressive option strategy. And, and why might you want to care about it? Well, you know, if you look back just in 2017, if you were just putting in no more than a thousand bucks per trade, and we run about an average of six trades a month, about 75 trades a year with this strategy, that thousand bucks into each trade maximum, uh, including all the, not just winners, but also losers, would have grossed out at over 15 grand through October, and we're already up over two grand in November just in the, in the first third of the month here. So the bottom line is that the potential is there to not just potentially double your money year over year with a reasonable capital allocation, but even more. I usually don't like talking about such grand promises, but the, and, and realize that there's risk that you could lose whatever you put into a given trade. These are definitely more aggressive trades. But the bottom line is that I'm, I'm really excited about the opportunity, and I'll share with you why as we look at a volatility chart in a few slides. But I want to show you some case studies just to kind of show you this isn't just from something in the past. This is stuff that's been happening just in, in recent weeks where we've been calling out these trade opportunities. It's rare that I'll actually recommend buying something in front of earnings, but there's one strategy that then one time when I do recommend holding a trade that's working into earnings. And that's where you've been able to double your money before the earnings. This is an example here with Microsoft where we got a buy signal on Microsoft here, uh, October 12th, and uh, buying into the Microsoft, in this case, November 80 calls. And we were able to cash out half of our position at a double. And that's our first rule of thumb. If you can get a double, take half your money off the table at a double. You know what that does? It gets your risk capital back in your pocket. This creates what we call a free trade, which means that even if the other trade uh, were to go to nothing, you would still break even on the worst case scenario on that trade. Again, all these examples are before commission, so keep your commissions in mind. But you need to, you know, there's a lot of great brokers now that can get you in and out of these trades very, very reasonably. Um, so we're buying this thing actually for like 55 bucks a contract. So that means you're you're controlling 100 shares of Microsoft when it was trading about 76 bucks. So controlling $7,600 worth of stock for just 50. 55 bucks, okay? That's more than 101 leverage potential. So when Microsoft reported that better than expected earnings, the stock had closed the day before the earnings uh, going back here a couple weeks to uh, close around 78-ish, uh, and then it opened at 84 and a half. We sold that, that $55 option out, the rest of our position out, for $4.71, 471 bucks against the $55 entry price. That was a 756% win 
on that second piece when we cash it out. Now, usually we try to sell a quarter at 200%, the rest of it at 300%, but if we get a big home run windfall gap like that, we, we book them and take the money and run. Microsoft's been kind of chopping sideways since. Uh, so, you know, that was a couple weeks ago, and we're gonna talk about what we just done this week next, but you see, if since the beginning of the year, like I said, no more than a thousand bucks into any one trade and saying, what could you do? Um, and never holding more than five trades open at once. So theoretically, you could do this with as little as 5K. We tend to recommend a $10,000 account and putting in a thousand bucks is about 10% of your capital at risk, uh, just for, we think, a more sensible approach uh, to not having so many highs and lows. But this is gonna have more swings to it. You can see that we had a lot of months with a couple grand or more in gross profits, and that includes the losses. Um, again, before commissions and saying, you know what, we had that one whack in September where just nothing seemed to be firing in September, and we gave back three grand, and then we made it up, and then some in October, and already off to new equity highs into uh, this month. And that's because of two big wins so far. We've actually got several other open positions right now, but let me just show you the couple that we recommended. This is interesting because here's a great case. This is Broadcom, AVGO. You probably heard about this one. On Friday, they announced that they were interested in buying out Qualcomm. I mean, this is unbelievable because when I started Big Trends back in 99, Qualcomm was the growth stock of the day. It was the apple of its day. Now Qualcomm is kind of viewed as a value stock and Broadcom is more of one of those growth momentum names. So we are more interested in trading these, these stocks that can really trend. And here's a great example where we recommend in buying the December 320 calls on Broadcom at 75 cents. You say the stock was trading in the 262 range. We're buying 60 points out of the money. How can we possibly expect to get paid on that? Well, because the options are priced for the earnings that are going to hit before the week before the uh, options expiration in mid-December. And so bottom line is that you have to pay up for that. Now, we know that because of that, they're going to be held a little bit more stable even when it goes against us. And we were wrong for a day and a half on this one. You can see it actually spiked down uh, over 10 points against us intraday on a closing basis. was never down more than about five points against us. But this is why I don't recommend in the first five days of our holding period using any kind of a price stop. We tell people, look, you know, you could get, you could lose what you put into a trade. If it just goes straight against us, uh, then bottom line is that, you know, you could, you could get whacked and, and basically that's going to happen sometimes. I tell people to plan for that because if you put a price stop in on this, you would have lost 50% in that quick intraday whipsaw two days later. And then we were able to instead double our money here when it spiked up here on Monday on all that hype on Monday morning, the stock opened at 280. Uh, range. We said, thanks very much. Let's book them. We bought them at 75 cents. Let's book them at a buck and a half on the first half of our position. And then, you know what? Yesterday we got taken out of this trade when it trade, traded back to our 75 uh, bucks for contract entry. 75 cents is the way it's quoted. 75 bucks controlling 100 shares. So we said bye bye at a break even on the second half. That's how volatile these options can be. But you know what? We still averaged a 50% gain on the trade over four trading days. You know, I'll take that any day of the week. By taking that first half at 100%, it gives me a lot of flexibility to run. And we're not just always bullish. We also caught T-Mobile from a recommendation I made late last week to buy into the T-Mobile December 55 puts, paid 70 bucks a contract for them, 70 cents the way they're quoted, never paying more than 100 bucks a contract. We always keep it at, at no more than a buck. And the next day, uh, Monday morning, you may have heard T-Mobile and Sprint's deal fell apart. Now, how did I know it was going to happen? We're going to talk about some of these indicators. I didn't know that deal was going to fall apart, but I felt pretty optimistic that you were seeing the breakdown on this chart back here on the 30th. Let me mark this one up a little bit. So, okay, on the 30th, this is what we call our setup point. We're getting, we're going to talk about these indicators, CCI, percent R, the ADX, uh, all setting up here. And what I need to see is I need to see a breakdown below that support. It didn't happen for a couple of days, and then it happened right there uh, on the close of the second. We broke down underneath that level. And so when it opened back up a little bit, you can see it's it's testing right into intraday that big trends band, that 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 white line on the chart, that little thin white jagged line that's moving down, that's resistance. Now that we're below the lower end of that, we've been below it for a few days, but we hadn't really gotten the momentum going. You can see before, uh, kind of like what Tony was talking about in her presentation, you see these lines of support, whether you use Fibonacci or a support resistance band or whatever, like, like the big trends band here, 
it's essentially showing you that there's support in there. And then when that support goes, that's where the bottom can fall out. And it indeed did fall out with T-Mobile. You see it edged down a little bit more uh, yesterday, edged up a little bit today. We're still holding half of that position, even though we're back below 100% again on the second half, because we still think there's more downside to come with a, a trending market, in this case, to the downside. We'll watch it closely and see what happens around 57 bucks and go from there. But just an example of just this week, two doublers that we had for our Grand Slam uh, option subscribers here. Now, why is this such a great opportunity to buy options right now? In case you've been under a rock, um, I'll update you that the CBOE volatility index of VIX has been hovering around 10 for a good part of this year. Um, it's basically near a decade plus lows. We got down to nine and just below nine actually a, a month or two ago, just really historically low volatility. Now, the reality is what does that mean? It means that it suggests that the S&P 500 should trade plus or minus 10% of the course of next year. You know that a year ago today, we had the, uh, the 2016 presidential election, and you know that the market is up some 25%, depending on what index you look at, maybe 30% uh, from that uh, low point, essentially, uh, at, the, uh, at the start of last November, a year later, here we've had a monster rally. You're paying 10% volatility and you're getting 25 to 30% volatility. You've got a big advantage buying options, as long as you can get those kind of trends that are moving bigger than what the market expects. I think you and I both recognize that the volatility is going to be there in the market. And instead of having to make a bet that VIX has to rally, we can actually just trade those really strong trending names, buying relatively cheap options and, and take advantage of those very strong trend based moves that are much bigger than what the market is pricing for in the options market. Now, one of the things that goes with uh, swinging for the fences as, as the, the home run approach to Grand Slam takes is, I like the analogy of Babe Ruth because he was a home run leader of his day, 714 career home runs, but you know what? He had almost twice as many strikeouts. A lot of people don't know that. They know he was the strikeout leader of the day, but 1,330 strikeouts versus 714 home runs, almost twice as many strikeouts. You say, hold on, that was still good for some six championships out of about 16 seasons. I mean, just a really high success rate overall, even though sometimes, sure, he went back uh, to, the, to the dugout after striking out. That, he's, as, I love his quote on that. He says, never let the fear of striking out get in your way. I love that little quote in his signature on there, because basically that's a great reminder that you can't let a, a disappointment get you down with, with this strategy. The, what, I've, what I've learned is, and I, what I try to share with our big trends traders and people coming into the Grand Slam option strategy is, you just got to make sure you're not overcommitting your capital on any one trade. That You got to know that when you put in, uh, in these aggressive strategy trades, that you put in capital you might, you might see some trades just go bye-bye and you can't get anything out of them because they just never went your way. You gave it that initial five-day window. By the time it came up five days later, it wasn't even worth closing out. That's going to happen sometimes. And, you, and sometimes it's not worth closing out and then it comes back. But other times it just, it just craps out. I, I tell people about that on the front end because you've got to be able to have that kind of stomach to do this. And the only way you can have that stomach to do this is to do it on a small amount of your capital per trade. Trade. Don't start taking the big successes that we have and then start extrapolating it and piling in your whole portfolio or too much of your portfolio into a trade. That's going to get you in trouble. N not even the best and brightest on Wall Street can make it through that kind of poor money management and capital allocation. You've got to just be small and steady and consistent. And that's how the home runs can really uh, can you can really swing big, as Babe said, with everything he's got and you've got. So hit big or miss big, but obviously we we the beauty of options is you can't lose more than you put into it when you buy an option. You can make in this case not just double your money, you can make triple, quadruple, or like in the Microsoft example, 756 percent on half of our position. So that's important. Now the other thought here is that a fundamental catalyst I always look at is earnings and earnings surprises. I'm not just a technician. I want to know that the institutions who, let's face it, they're the they're that nasty looking 800 pound gorilla you don't want to fight. I don't want to run into that gorilla anywhere uh, and have to face off against that thing because basically it could be fierce, right? You could really get beat up. We don't want that. We want to get ourselves in, in tune with that follow the gorilla where it's going and, and feast uh, uh, accordingly. And, and so earning surprises, institutions are just as much chasers into uptrends and chasers out of downtrends as you and I are. So from this perspective, you know, we want to go with the direction of the earnings surprise, never against it. So you're looking for very positive earnings 
get on board big up trends when our indicators confirm it. Sometimes you get a good earnings report and it won't confirm it. Um, other times you get a nasty one and it gets bought into. We actually um, you know, had a positive reaction to what should have been bad news and just bought into one of those names this morning a couple of days after the earnings and it's already off to a good start by today's close. So bottom line is we want, we want to be in tune with that, um, with that approach. It, this also is called the fat tails of the distribution. You may, you may have heard of like Nassim Tlaib spoke, black swans, talking about these unusual events are happening a lot more often than what's expected. So the tails, it, most people assume that the current price, which would be on the left chart here at the zero deviation line, that would be the current price, saying it should be happening about 40%. You look at what's actually happening on the more log normal distribution, I don't wanna to get too technical here, but essentially it's happening just over 30% of the time. But that means that those tails on the further out uh, distribution, two deviations, three deviations away, are much wider, much more, uh, much more frequent than what the market expects. In fact, if you look at a three deviation move on the S&P 500, if a normal distribution would imply that you should only be getting that three and a half percent drop or more uh, on a daily basis on the S&P 27 times over the last 100 years. You know what's actually happened? We've dropped more than three and a half percent now more than 100 times. This was done uh, back about uh, several years ago, uh, over 100 times since 1927 in the last 90 years. So it's happening actually with like a fourfold impact than what the market expects. That means when you can find these trends that are evolving to be bigger up moves or bigger down moves than what should be happening, that's your edge against the options pricing model. You're buying relatively cheap options out uh, a little out of the money, basically taking advantage of that mispricing, that underpricing of those uh, fat tails. So that's why I believe we've been able to be so successful with this approach. Now, another tool I like to use is the Commodity Channel Index, the CCI. It sounds like you should only use it on the futures markets and commodities, but it's been shown to work with a lot of securities, especially with our testing on our favorite trend names, the upside and downside, uh, which I'll share with you some of those names in a little bit. Now, the CCI basically is a little different than most indicators that are focused just on the close. The CCI factors in the high, low, and close, divided by three to come up with what's called a typical price. But the big aha here is that overbought can actually be really good. And, and a lot of people hear the word overbought and they think, oh, I'm not buying that, it's moved, to, overbought implies it's moved too far too fast. But you'll note that the big trends, you look at Apple, you look at a lot of the other big names that have moved up and up uh, far greater than anybody could have expected, will stay overbought a lot longer than people expect. Same thing with oversold like T-Mobile I showed you, and when oversold started to break down and then the selling pressure really started to pour into it almost right away. Um, so that's where we're able to quickly take advantage of that because we're not losing much time in those options and we're able to get that quick feedback loop uh, and the trend working in our favor. Another trend confirmation tool I like to use is the ADX. This is the average directional movement. And the ADX shows us how the DMI lines are moving. The positive DMI shows you net new highs, negative DMI, DMI minus shows you you net new lows, you're getting an uptrend when you're getting a lot more higher highs and a lot less new lows, actually higher lows. So, you know, a way, a way to see that we'll get into with the ADX in a minute. And then Big Trends Bands is my way that I created to actually uh, take the inspiration that Larry Williams gave me with his percent range or percent R indicator, which is shown on this, on this bottom half of this chart on the left and saying, you know what, when percent R goes really overbought, it, that will stay above that upper green overbought threshold. Another way to view that is to create a band around that. These are the 80 and 20% lines, which is classically fit within the 80-20 rule. It says, you know what? My, most of my money comes from the top 20% of my trades within this kind of a strategy. I, I'd say probably 80% of my profits are gonna come from a relative minority of my trades. And then I'm trying to make sure that the other trades don't hurt me uh, on a net basis that I can, if it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, I get out, I move on to the next trade. But you see with Baidu in this example, we were able to take 100, 200, 300% profits in four trading days overall, because we're just catching this breakaway phase here where it just has started to break out above that big trend spans resistance. And we said, we gotta get on board that that trade. You see, we were out a little early. We could have made even more. I don't I don't look back and say, oh, what it could have should, I could have made 500%, I could have made a 10 bagger. I say, look, you know, our, our testing showed gradually taking profits, but giving it a chance to run on, on, the, on the remainder to the 200 and 300% thresholds is just fine by me. That's above the upper big trend span, below the lower band, we get bearish. So with this chart with Baidu, actually, you can see it's not just the big trend span that's in play. You can also see the CCI was also breaking out through that resistance here on that first 
white circle. Then you can see also that uh, we're getting the ADX. The ADX actually had turned up on the configuration we like to see even a little earlier than the other indicators had. So ADX was actually telling you we're getting ready to trend here when that green bottom panel ADX line is starting to move up. A lot of people critique ADX and say, oh, that's uh, it's, it's ADX is going up. It doesn't tell you which direction the trend's going. In this case, the positive directional movement in blue above the negative directional movement in, in red. And you see that those two lines, the blue and the red lines are diverging. You know, blue line saying more and more new highs, that's good, positive directional movement rising. The red line saying less, less new lows, that's a sign of a higher lows uptrend. That divergence is what's pulling the ADX up. And of course, until ADX rolls over, that's a really nice trending phase. But again, we, we take money as the market makes it available to us. We took the 300%. Uh, sometimes they'll keep going, sometimes they won't. Part of the advantage you get here is knowing what you're taking advantage of in the options pricing model. I showed you that fat tails flaw, I think, that the Black Shoals model has in it. Remember the guys that had the start, that won the Nobel Prize from Black Shoals in 2000 and, and uh, I'm sorry 1997 actually ended up going to long-term capital management, and blowing that hedge fund up a year later in '98. Almost took down the financial system because of the ridiculous leverage they were using in the swaps market, especially. But they were betting that trends didn't exist, and they got burned. Um, the things we got to be careful about here, because we're buying more aggressive out-of-the-money options, is we got to be careful about theta. So I'm not going to ever hold an option with two weeks or less to go before the option is live. That's where the fastest rate of decay is. But we will hold options about anywhere from a four to six weeks out, usually, and, and hold them down to as little as two weeks out if it's working in our favor, because the, the time becomes less of a factor as that option goes more and more um, either at the money or in the money, especially, and we can take advantage of that. The other factor that matters is gamma. A lot of people talk about delta, wanting a high delta. These options I'm recommending are going to have a lower delta, but they're going to pick up delta faster. That's the rate of change of delta. So let's look at a couple. Um, let's look at one more tra uh, case study, and then we'll look at another example. This one kind of blew me away because we did a trade on Rand Gold Resources. I've been talking about this stock, GOLD, for more than a decade. It's my favorite gold stock. I was telling people about it even before the 2008 Great Recession because they had sold one of their mines and actually used some of the proceeds to buy longer term options on gold as a way to really benefit from uh, moves in gold. So it's basically like a, sort of like a, an option into itself. You can see here that uh, this one, we got a buy signal right as we're getting the confirmation. You can see it tried to break out earlier in this chart. Uh, in the middle of the chart, but basically we weren't quite getting the CCI confirmation. The CCI was close, but no cigar here. So this first peak did not confirm on CCI. So we said, let's stay away here. And then the next one that confirmed is it starts to just kind of slightly break out through that past resistance. You're seeing now we're getting that first green, the first white circle and saying we want to buy those 110 calls. These were in, in October as of late August. So we've got about six weeks to go before the expiration and boom, in two days it pops up. We get actually more than a double, 160% on the first piece because the gap went our favor. We'll be working in order to double, but if it gaps even more than that, we'll say thanks, we'll take it. Then you see it settle for a few days and a lot of people will give up on a trade after it kind of goes through a consolidation. But look at what's happening relative to the big trends bands in that light blue line. We're holding that nice little stair step, I call it the escalator that, that that stock's taking up. And then you can see we're already out of it before it breaks at the 300% on the final piece. Now, I didn't know that was going to be the top, but just a lot of our testing shows that about 300%, it's like, okay, they can be they can reverse or they can keep going, but it's like, hey, at that point, it's a little bit more of a crapshoot. You've gotten a big part of the pop in that in that name. And it's kind of that, that feeling like bulls and bears can get rich and hogs get slaughtered. We don't want to be piggish in holding on too long and then giving up a big chunk of profits if we can avoid it. Now, the other uh, aspects I mentioned when it comes to the, the Greeks of options is a lot of people think, well, I should buy options out here four months away because the 120-day decay rate is not that great. You're not going down that much in your total options time value, which is what this left uh, panel shows you. You see, it would, it would lose relatively little time that first month from 120 days to 90 days. The problem is you have to pay so much more for those options that you have to go way far out of the money, hurting your, your bang for your buck and, and your, 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 your deltas would be so low that you really wouldn't see any big uh, leverage compared to what we see in about the 30-day window. Somewhere, like I mentioned before, in this 40-day uh, 40, 40 window down to about 
uh, you know, say the last couple of weeks before expiration, we can trade. But usually we're trying to catch them quick in that 40 days down to about, you know, say 20 days away before the expiration. We're trying to catch on. You see, there is some decay there. It's it's slower on that first 40 down to 30 days. And then it's picking up speed as you get towards a couple of weeks before the expiration. But at least we're missing the worst. We do not want to trade this last couple of weeks because the decay rate is just too great. You're, you're taking on too much theta risk. That's the basically the melting ice cube. The, the, the temperature in the room is heating up as you get closer and closer to expiration. That ice cube is melting faster and faster of time, and we don't want to play that game that close to the expiration. Now, what's interesting is when you think about gamma, which is how much the delta can pick up on the next point move after the first point move up. So we go from 50 to, say, 51. Gamma tells you how much your delta is going to rise from 51 to, say, 52. So if we're, if we're starting here, let's start at 50, and at the money option uh, on the expiration day in red would have a 50 delta, and you would have a huge gamma on that for the final day of trading. We wouldn't want to trade that. It'd be too risky. But you have a gamma of 43. That would mean that your delta would go from 50%, meaning you'd pick up half of the one-point move from 50 to 51 on that option. And it's saying at 51, it would, it would pick up like 43 gammas and make at 51 have a delta of 93, meaning that from 51 to 52, you'd make 93% of that next point move up. So it's like that, that derivative that shows you how fast you pick up um, deltas. And what's interesting is about 60 days out in purple, you can actually see that the highest gamma is not at the money anymore. It's actually slightly out of the money as your highest gamma here at about 49 bucks or so. So you say, look, you know, slightly out of the money options will give you more bang for your buck about anywhere from four to six weeks out. It's kind of the sweet spot that we look for, but we got to hit it fast. It's got to be working for us and and that and picking up deltas, meaning we're right about the stock direction and the trend continuing in our favor to overcome the loss of time. Now, um, you know, it was interesting because when I first started to show people about this Grand Slam uh, in the public about this Grand Slam strategy, kind of launching it out here just recently in the last couple of weeks, the buyer public, I actually mentioned to people that I just booked my first half of my profits on Microsoft and I was still holding the remainder. And I said I was willing to free roll that into earnings. And some people thought, why would you do that? You might lose all of that remaining piece and then end up with a break even. Why, why not just book the double on the whole thing? Well, think about it this way. If you if you took a thousand bucks invested in this trade, remember we bought it for fifty five bucks a contract. That would get you about eighteen contracts to get up to just under a thousand bucks invested. And you said, look, if I took it all out at a double, then you've taken a thousand, you turned it into two thousand. Well, in the other example, I showed you what we actually did. The first half we took out at a double to get our thousand bucks of risk capital back here. And when the next piece hit. It's certainly bigger than even I expected, 756%. But you think about that, you know, even on the remaining nine contracts that you made seven, over 750%, you're talking about that's an 8.5 multiplier on that money, which means that the combined position was up like 425%. So instead of being up 100%, we're up 425%. You've got more than a fourfold impact in your favor by holding that other half in this case. It's not always going to work that well, but the point is, is that why cut your your, sell, your profit short? That's that's the old Wall Street phrase: let winners run, uh, cut uh, uh, and and cut your losers short. A lot of people do the opposite. They let their losers run. They hold on and hope. That's a huge mistake. If after five days we're not right on the underlying stock, if it's against us after five trading days, I say bye bye. Even if it's down seventy five percent on the option, I just kick it out and say, okay, moving on. You know, let's get what we can and say let's let's move on to the next trade. That way we don't get stuck holding our losers and we ro roll on over and roll our focus into the next opportunity. If it's working, I give it a chance to keep running. Microsoft was working and the home run after earnings hit. Now we talk about the kind of names that I've that I've traded and tested and 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 in, in real world trading I actually had a lot of success with. You can see there's definitely your share of tech on here. And you could even you can even do this approach with the Fang names: uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. You know what? We already have a service that trades the Fang names. Uh, so I, I wanted to do something that kind of diversified our big trend subscribers into names that maybe are the next Fang leaders, if you will, like Alibaba, Baidu. You know, a Broadcom, as I mentioned, we were already in uh, from this past week and, and cashed out of already um, this week. Um, you know. Chipotle, uh, of course, a little more volatile name in the food group, but CMG can certainly move. Goldman Sachs, and you notice a lot of these names also are fairly high dollar. They might, a lot of them might be a hundred bucks or more per share, and controlling a hundred dollars or more per share stock, you know, by one contract for under a hundred bucks, and that you'd have to pay ten grand or more for these stocks. That's the hundred or more to one leverage that you can really get some big moves and very small percentage gains on the stock. 
Microsoft, a lot of people would say that's a very developed name, but that's the one we hit the big home run on on the earnings. NVIDIA, of course, has its earnings here this week, um, you know, so that's going to be interesting to watch. But again, it's already kind of come and gone as a signal for us, so we're not we're not trading that. And would not recommend buying some right in front of earnings to speculate unless you get that first half of your capital back at a double. If you haven't hit a double, we would just say shut it down right before the earnings. Win, lose, or, draw, or, or less than a double, we say, okay, you know, moving on. Uh, even names like Philip Morris, um, you know, some of the credit card names, Visa, MasterCard, um, uh, you see some of the casino names as well, Wind Resorts, Vegas Sands, and more. Uh, Starbucks is on that list as well. So just a lot of interesting names. And then the gold and oil names, like Rand Gold is my favorite gold play, G-O-L-D. Summer's Day, one of my favorite energy plays, SLB, because it's energy services, even more leveraged than the integrated oil companies. So a lot of those names, about 40 different ones right now, maybe 44, I think we're totally following, but we can add to that list. But there's more than 4,000 optional names. So we're really talking about the top 1% of the options universe. Now, it's interesting because you see this chart of Tesla. Tesla's on our list too. And you can see that, yeah, we got to buy out of the monies when we when we trade Tesla. Tesla gave me my first buy signal on this chart, and then it ran away from me here right as it had broken out right here. We're getting the initial breakout happening here, and then it gapped up, and we missed it on that first gap. So in that kind of case, what we do is we say, well, then buy the retest. The first official retest happened right here. And you see, it looks like a pretty good entry. Uh, Tesla's trading in the neighborhood of about uh, maybe 310-ish, 305-ish. And you say, okay, you know, we, we catch it on the first move to about 325. You think that should be pretty good. Next retest comes in and holds here as well. And the percent R and the CCI is also retesting there. Those hold, it bounces again. But you know what? By um, the, the first end of the first week of May, on our May options that we bought, they were only worth about 10% of what we paid for them. And we said it's not worth closing that out. And it just didn't didn't spike any further. And that's a, that's a crap out. Believe it or not, you're right on the stock and you still don't make money with that particular strategy. But you know what? The next one here where it went straight up over this next couple of weeks after the next buy signal, that's the 100, 200, 300% averaging out to uh, about 175% on the total, that more than made up for the prior loser. Now, if you'd held on and hoped, you would have given back your profits by the time it's showing an effective exit here. We're, we're out well before that, that violation on the chart itself. This next one here we did not take because you can see while it's showing a percent R breakout, look at where the CCI is. It's not confirmed. So we might have it tell us, hey, look, looks like a setup here. You see even here where CCI is trying to confirm uh, then in September, you see that's looking pretty good. But look, ADX doesn't quite meet our criteria here. It's got to cross above that declining direction movement line. So all three of them have to line up. That's why one or two can show us a possible setup and we start watching it, but then we wait for everything to line up. I'm really picky about that because if you, if you don't get picky on it, you're going to get onto too many slow boats and you don't want that. You see Schlumberger, uh, in this case, percent R and CCI were already confirming back here when the stock started gapping down, but then it took the ADX and another bar behind it to actually confirm here, and then we're getting all three together. From that point on Schlumberger, that quick pop down over that next week and a half, that to 100, then 200%, and then the 300 wasn't reached, and by the time it reversed um, 100% of our gains, we were back to about a 75% gain on the remainder on the last quarter. So, you know, plus 100, plus 200, then plus 75 on the last piece, that happens too. You see it tries to give a buy back here, but it's it's not anywhere close to the percent R and the uh, CCI, even though it looks like the ADX is starting to go here. That's the first leg of that stool, but the other two legs are too wobbly. They're not there. We say pass. Even when CCI tried to confirm up here, it never quite got through that resistance. If it had, we could have gotten a buy, uh, but we didn't quite get there. So all, all things considered, it keeps us out of trouble if everything's not lining up. Now, another interesting thing that we look at here, and I know um, I've got about maybe a few more minutes, and I want to tell you about how you can get started with this special here we've set up for you if you're new to big trends uh, a fantastic way to get started is that I also look at option charts. So the, the stock chart is one thing, but the option chart also factors in how much time and volatility is priced into that particular option. And you'll see this a lot. The stock will start breaking out, but the option chart's not there because it's been too long of a sideways consolidation. It needs some more uh, kind of kick to that uh, trend to really get going. So like Goldman Sachs is an example we had back in September to early October, actually, where you can see here, it was already starting to break out in late September. And then we're getting the launch point of everything coming together with that ADX move as well right there. And so we're buying that next bars open here on that uh, first white circle and catching a quick 100%. 
uh, on the about three days after that, and then we put a break even trailing stop from there, and it hits it right here. Now I would have thought here, wow, this looks like it's still going to hold, and we should hang in. But you can see from that point, it went down, back up, chop city, and we were glad to just be done with it. Take the average 50% gain off the two pieces, plus 100 and zero averages to plus 50, and move on. Now what's interesting to me is when you look at the option chart that we had. This is a November. Uh, 260 calls and we didn't have a lot of data on the daily options chart but look at how it's outside of for the most of the way there the big trends band and you see where the bulk of that gain is we bought it at a buck um, it goes to 240 we're out at two bucks on the first half at a double didn't quite get it to three bucks obviously and then it starts to really roll over here and break down here actually closer to about a buck 40 on this little breakdown point right in here where the percent rcci DMI lines are all starting to give it up on the 30 minutes. We're even looking at some of those timeframes as well to add value for our subscribers. Like I mentioned, over the first 10 months of the year of 15,700 in gross profits, like I said, over 10 months, I expect to do about maybe 60 trades by that point, maybe 75 trades in a year. And you know, you saw the Microsoft example. You know, of the second piece I mentioned uh, that when I update that for folks, I just can't believe. It. Wow. Microsoft gap that much, you know, and you think, well, gee, if you're going from 78 and change up to 84 and a half, that doesn't sound like a lot, six points, but that six points took the option from a doubler to 756% on that six point move. You know, six points on 78 bucks, you're talking about uh, not an incredibly unexpected move, it was a little more than the market expected, but basically you catch that directional trend right, you've gotten your risk capital back off, the, off in your pocket, you can free roll and free trade that uh, into earnings. That's the only way that I'll hold a position in the earnings if I've got our risk capital back in our pockets for all of our subscribers on Grand Slam. And, and as I mentioned, here's an option chart on Microsoft. It shows you, you know, from the time we first bought it, when it was like 55 cents there, Got that quick little pullback in the morning, and then and then it was dead money for like the first week. Even though the stock was starting to move in our favor, and you're going, "Gee, we're not really getting much initial leverage." That's because these options start out kind of low delta. We got that one kick in the stock there. You can see the 19th and 20th. That's where this option started to move. Let's go back for a second and see. Look at the the 19th and 20th. You're talking about you know back into this area here as it's moving uh, mid October, I guess you could say here, and you can see it's doing the same thing here really starting to kick up and basically um and and so you, you see a situation here in which uh it's it's making a really nice move and then it's dead money here for about uh four days we're sitting on it we've sold out a half of it a buck ten it's it we've had an order working a buck 65 it trades like a buck 60 and then basically uh you see here that uh it it opens right here at 471 then we're done. It went to six bucks intraday. I don't, I'm not a perfectionist. I can't, you cannot be a perfectionist in the market. You got to take what the market gives you and run with it. As I said, through the first 10 months, this is what it's looked like. I can't promise it's always going to be 90% winning months. Um, I've, I've in fact expect it to be less and expect we're going to have some of those dings along the way. But as I mentioned, uh, the, in uh, November thus far, up over two grand. Um, and that's just through the first third of the month. So combining this gamma, uh, boosting approach with option charts with uh, these uh, you know top trending stocks leads to a very powerful home run based approach to find these trend outliers and really leverage it. So we're going to look for those earnings based catalysts or other technical catalysts for breakouts. Buying out of my options, I'll never pay more than 100 bucks a contract with these high gamma options. And then our, we like time stops better than price stops. If after five trading days we're not right on the stock, then we get out. And then you see when we're getting 200, 200, 300, or in the case of a gap even bigger than that, we'll take the money run. Never invest in more than 10% of our capital allocated per trade with this approach. And then I do weekly video training for my Grand Sam Option subscriber. So there's a lot in here to soak in. And usually on a 12 month access uh, uh, for this kind of value, for the kind of gain potential, we usually charge $19.95 uh, for a 12 month access that gets you 75 trades in a year. But what I'm doing is an extra special for you all today is saying, you know what? I'm going to let you try it on a 30 day rolling basis and give you an opportunity to get in. Instead of it $199 for 30 days, I'm going to give you an opportunity to buy it today for just 99 bucks for the next 30 days worth of trades. I promise an average of six trades a month. It could be more. We've had double digit trades a month sometimes, but most on average you say, you know, five, five or six trades a month should make you more than happy, but six trades is our typical average. And then you say, okay, for 99 bucks, you're saying, okay, can we show you an incredible return on that investment? If we do, I think you're gonna wanna stick with it 
uh, month after month. So what we set up for you here is when you go to this link at bigtrends.com forward slash GSO, I'll, I'll go to that page real quick here actually and show you this with all the goodies that you get as part of this package here. Um, and, and you can see here that basically we set it up bigtrends.com slash GSO that you can just set this up on a 30 day auto renew. So every 30 days, you know, if you're happy with the service, just let it keep going and it'll auto renew uh, after 30 days from now. If you're not happy with it, you can tell us, hey, I don't want to continue this. It's not for me. It's too aggressive, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Uh, I, I understand some people, you know, can't take that kind of risk to, to get to that potential home run. Like I showed you with the Bay of Ruth analogy early on, you've got to have that that mentality of taking relatively small bets, especially as you get started and get comfortable with this. And even when you have success with it, please don't just go hog wild crazy on your capital allocation because that's how you can really mess it up on an effective strategy like this when you catch the occasional drawdown if you put too much into your trade. So be, be conservative in your capital allocation. But I think after 30 days, you'll be so happy you want to let it go and let it keep renewing month after month. And what I'm going to do for you as well, I'm not going to raise the price on you after your first 30 days. I'm going to keep it there. We'll auto renew every 30 days for just 99 bucks a month. So that way, if you like it, I'll, I'll honor and then you save another 50 percent the month after and the month after that. So in the course of a year, you'd be in for just under 1200 bucks. I still saves you on the usual 1995 annual price, a nice little chunk. And you can see, you know, scroll down below and you can see all the kind of gains that we've been able to book 100, 200, 300 percent type of returns on, um, you know, and the kind of names we can trade. So it's not always the sexiest Teslas of the world, but sometimes it's Southwest Airlines. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, like I said, Schlumberger or, uh, or uh, you know, GOLD. Uh, so bottom line is there's a lot of different ways we can get it, get there. I give you weekly video training so you know exactly where we stand. And you learn the settings. You learn the indicators that make this up so you know how you can follow along on your charts at home as well. Uh, so what you do here is you go to this page, bigtrends.com forward slash GSO, and, uh, and then basically you hit the Add to Cart button. When you hit the Add to Cart button, you see it's already taken the discount in effect. There's no other coupon code that you need to apply. And all you do from there is you just hit the green checkout button here just under the price point. Uh, no taxes if you're not in the state of Kentucky where I am. So basically it's just 99 bucks, no shipping. Of course, you get a member's access as well as getting real-time emails and real-time text alerts to your smartphone. If you want to get that, I'll show you how you can add that real quick. Uh, basically what you're doing here is you're just walking through this. You say, okay, get your information in bold in, get you whichever credit card you want to use. We take all the major credit cards. Um, you can just say you saw it with me on a webinar or, um, you know, if, if my lead consultant Chris Harris helps you, you can put him in there as well, however you want to do it. In the customer note field, this is where you can say, text me the alerts and just tell us what, what smartphone you want it to go to. So whatever your number is, uh, you know, you name it and then you say, okay. And you say, okay, then you tell us what you use, AT&T or you use a Verizon because we put all of our different text providers into a, uh, you know, a, a dedicated batch file that everybody gets it sent at once, but it goes faster that way when you tell us who you're using on your smartphone. Check the box when you've read over the terms and conditions. This is an automated renewing program, so you need to let us know if it's not for you within the first 30 days so it won't get billed again in, in a future month. But if you're happy with it, don't have to lift a finger. It'll just bill 99 bucks after 30 days, each and every 30 days, making sure that we're keeping you happy, of course. Review all that and then hit the submit order button. You're good to go. Um, so I want to make sure that we posted that link in the chat box and then basically I'll, I'll go ahead and hand it back over uh, to Renee here. So let me just type it in real quick. Bigtrends.com forward slash GSO for Grand Slam options. Check it out. I think you'll be happy with it. If you have any questions, you can also call us toll free at our 800 Big Trends line. That's 800 244 8736. Or just remember 800 Big Trends with any questions you have. 